it. Losses became very high starting in 2009. Any questions, please? What possibilities are there your film uh, will be screened in the uh, in <laughs> Lebanon uh, cinemas? <laughs> Um, we are just preparing it for the censors at the moment, but um, it doesn't look promising. <laughs> I don't think it's going to pass from what everyone's saying that is in the film industry in Lebanon. They just um, don't, they think it'll be banned, um, which is not terrible, but we will, it will reach the people of Lebanon uh, one way or another, if not through private screenings and guerrilla screenings, but it'll be um, streamed. For them. Since when have you been? I mean, of course, you've interviewed after the whole bombing, but but how long ago? Did, I didn't get that completely. When when did you start to interview people? Because you've been there so many times. Yes, I started filming. The first film shoot was in 2017, and then we went back twice in 2018. Went back twice in 2019, and we couldn't go back for the explosion. So we, because of COVID, so we. It was mostly all, um, you know, social media footage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd like to um, ask you if you don't mind making some comments for the for the camera too, because as we said, this is our first, you know, public screening, and it's really good to get feedback from people who aren't Lebanese, um, you know. And I'd I'd love to capture that to understand um, how you reacted to seeing that. Um, I know the content's very dense because uh, it was a full, thorough, thorough investigation. But um, just to see how you react to seeing something like that, and if you can relate to another country, your own countries, whether it's happened in those situations, um, I'd love to hear back from people and and sort of capture that on camera too, if we can. Before you do that, because we'll ask you in a minute, I just want to say that um, this film is is um, not just a movie, it's a movement. Um, and I hope that it sort of provoked you, but it's really to provoke Lebanese people in Lebanon and outside Lebanon to take action. They have got power. And for anyone who lives in a democracy to realise that it is within our own will to, to make change when we're not satisfied and we shouldn't be bystanders in our own story. Um, so, you know, I, uh, I hope that um, it may have provoked anger or frustration or even some emotional response um, within you to see that happening to, uh, you know, Lebanon. And Lebanon is a tiny little country, but it has had, as I said, like a extraordinary journey through history over centuries and thousands of years. And um, I don't think anyone could have put it better than Ambassador Tom Fletcher when he said that, you know, the idea of Lebanon and the those fighting for coexistence and those fighting against it is really the battle of consciousness and the battle today that the world is actually um, facing. So it's interesting that it comes back to Lebanon. Um, but anyway, on that note, um, I'd love if anyone would like to come over and just make a comment and just say how you felt about the film, what you thought about it, that'd be great. You have a question? Uh, I really admired uh, your courage to do this because uh, besides from your, your um, role as a director, you were an, an investigator and a very um, decisive uh, journalist and uh, I was wondering how is it was for you to reach uh, out all these people mm. of uh, corruption and uh, persuade them to talk to you. Mm. <laughs> you know when I started the story and started the interviewing I didn't think I was going to be sitting down accusing them of anything so my questions were very innocent asking them what are you doing? Like you saw me asking them, like we need to fix corruption. And my by the time I got to the prime minister and I said, excuse me, the people think you're one of the crooks, basically. 
Um, that had been like two years of and lots and lots. I did over 200 interviews for the film and I had, I, it was my one chance, you know, with him um, to say what I had to say and I, you know, you have to just do it. You just have to <laughs> just do it. It's hard when you're accusing someone and they're the Prime Minister and there's bodyguards. <laughs> But uh, I was being very sincere. There was no malice or it was a very genuine question. Like, you know, so I think um, he took it. He sort of grit, gritted his teeth. I don't know if you could see that when he responded. <sighs> We're not trying to stop. <laughs> um, but, you know, with everyone else, um, I was genuinely talking to them and asking them, you know, because I thought they were the good guy and then they were the good guy and they were the good guy. And they're like, they're all the bad guys at the end. They're all point fingers and do nothing. And as you, as you saw, they all just divide up the pie and keep it quiet. And But they're all happy to point it, they accuse each other. And this is like, um, you know, it's really horrifying for the people, especially right now. I just came from Lebanon. The situation is horrible, horrible in Lebanon. Um, we're doing a screening on the 13th of September for uh, diplomats. Is about um, the Australian ambassador is hosting the US, the UK, the EU. This to show them because they've all seen the trailer and they all want to see it. So um, because we can't sort of publicly, but they can do a private screening. But um, uh, yeah, uh, my role now is to get it there's five more festivals that we are going to go to I hope we might even be considered for the movie that matters festival because I love the format I met Margie and Khan and it was just like you know cross-examine these people but um the role of the film now is to travel around the world to as many audiences as possible to the Lebanese um to in the diaspora and then it will be released in Lebanon. If not theatrically, it will be released before the elections. Um, the goal is to release it before the elections so they get a push so they feel confident and they vote. And God willing, they don't stop the elections because they, they are trying to cancel the elections, delay elections, prevent the, the people in the diaspora from voting. That's the li last thing I heard there trying to silence our votes, the people in the diaspora, so. They're scheduled for uh, May 2022, 22, right? Yeah, oh, so yeah. there's a lot of stuff happening and th this is why we need um, this global sort of movement to get more voices around the world so that they can't get away with it because when they stay quiet and it's at home, it's like a family, you can get away with things, but promoting this films in English, it's getting taken around the world, it's exposing them on a global platform um, and having diplomats see in that sort of context who they're dealing with. Uh, we hope it'll make governments and global organisations uh, force them into having free and fair elections next year. That's, that's our goal, that, that we want them to hold the election so we can vote. Um, that's, that's our challenge right now, yeah. I'm Vangelis from Greece, and uh, I feel very angry for all the things that are happening in Lebanon. People of Lebanon, the power is in your hands. Go out and vote for your next year election. I just wanted to say that um, I saw, saw a lot of similarities between Greece and Lebanon in especially in the way some people feel cheated and angry at the whole situation because there's been similar cases of like corruption in our country as well and i even saw myself at one point in the movie there was this 22 year old guy and he was saying well i can't take it anymore so i'm going to leave now and uh, that's a question i ask myself very often because things in our country aren't going that well either so I always have the question, do I stay or do I go? So that was something that I kept from the whole thing. That's what I wanted to say. Hi, I am uh, Martin from the Netherlands. And uh, 
This film is uh, another example of uh, going into depth about what happened in Lebanon in the, in the, in the, in the past, but also in the very present. Uh, you read about it, you hear about it, of course, especially during those times uh, of the blast, but we don't really know, to be honest, like we hear something in the news, but we don't really know into detail what's going on in the country. And based on this film, uh, it, it gave me an insight of what's really happening in the country, what's going on, what happened in the past, and what's happening now. I want to thank you for that. Three, two, one, action. Hi, my name is Daisy Gedeon and I'm the director of Enough, Lebanon's Darkest Hour. I'm in uh, Castellarizio in Greece, uh, where the film has just had a, a public screening, one of its first global test screenings. Um, and we're here at the Beyond Borders International Documentary Film Festival at the invitation of the organisers. We're very grateful to be here. We had a very um, interesting and diverse audience watching the film, trying to gauge the reaction from a non-Lebanese audience um, to the film that um, covers the themes of corruption, reveals the kleptocracy that's controlling the country and preventing um, pr improvement and change in Lebanon. It's causing extreme suffering for the people who have reached a state of poverty that is, has never been visible in Lebanon in its entire history. Um, so we are very happy to be here and uh, wanting to understand how a global audience might be able to serve us and help spread this message um, to provide greater support to the Lebanese people because the kleptocracy are a mafia and a cartel that are controlling the country and the Lebanese alone can't do it uh, to change them. We need help. But one thing I go into very thoroughly in the film and I, is a major call of a call to action is the the requirement of the people of Lebanon and Lebanese in the diaspora to vote. Uh, Lebanon has elections next year and uh, in 2018 only 49.7 percent of the population voted and the result was tragic. It was very horrific for the country. Even more tragic was in the diaspora, which we have nearly 16 million Lebanese outside Lebanon. And we believe maybe 10 million could vote, but probably maybe even four or five million could be eligible to vote. Only 49,000 voted in 2018. We need everyone in the Lebanese diaspora who can vote to register and to vote in the elections next year. This is the most powerful voice an individual has. We must use our voice and we must vote with our hands and on paper. You want to ask me some questions? <laughs> I was curious to ask you, what are your thoughts about political documentaries, historical documentaries, and the, the popularity that they have, and uh, the role that they have, um, um, and what they reflect to, to citizens, to governments, and how serious are they taken? Mm. I think it's a very important question, especially in today's age. Political documentaries are not very popular especially at the most popular festivals because they are challenging, because they're testing the status quo, because they're going to make people upset. And unfortunately, governments and corporations and sponsors and etc. all work together. And um, so it's a battle, but thank God for festivals like Beyond Borders, like um, independent humanitarian festivals, United, you know, the um, United Nations, the Movie That Matters, those sort of festivals that provide a showcase, a platform for films that are dealing with critical, real issues. Um, you know, this is where we need them to support us. Documentaries that are political, or social, inju social injustice, humanitarian, 
We need more of those. We need people to speak more about what's going on. People's voices are become, becoming more and more silenced because people are scared. And it's, uh, it's, it's only going to cause the bad people in the world, the corrupt, the, uh, you know, the, the greedy to do more because the more silent we are, the more they get away with. So I think they have an incredibly important role in today's world. And I hope more and more people are courageous enough to, to stand up and speak and challenge the system wherever they are, because it's not just happening in Lebanon. Lebanon is one country. I give you an example in 2019, when Lebanon, in October 2019, when Lebanon uh, revolution started, uh, I looked into the, um, into the history of 2019 and by, 20, by January 2020 there was a report that came out that said 2019 saw the... 2019 saw the largest number of civil activists, civil activism and unrest in the world uh, more than any other decade since the 1960s. Uh, there was so much civil unrest in 2019 in so many countries that I think they said the numbers was around 43 uprisings around the world. So, and they've been quashed, quietened. They're still happening. Hong Kong, Peru, Catalan, um, you know, Ukraine. There's so many in Iran. There's still so many people who have not, who are still, their voices are not fulfilled. They're, they're fighting for their rights. And, you know, so films are so critical in bringing this story to a broader audience because they're entertaining. You can watch it outside in a beautiful atmosphere. You can learn and hopefully, even if it's not your own country, it might inspire you to do something for your own community. You're, it doesn't matter if it's not a government you're fighting. It might be a something, your neighbors, <laughs> it could be anything, but really to, to stand up for, for your rights. Uh, the theme of the, of the festival, the Beyond Borders Festival being the, the 200 year anniversary of the Greek Revolution, uh, provides a great platform for people to look at my film and to reconsider what it is, what a revolution is, what it means to stand up and, and, and your, what your voice is, what self-expression is, what, what kind of country we want, what does freedom mean? Um, you know, these, these should be re-inspired and reconsidered all the time. And we need to keep working on them because they're never, they're never set in stone. Uh, but I, I'm very grateful that uh, you know the, the the Beyond Borders festival and the organisers and judges considered the film uh, of value, because you know I look at Greece, and I think Greece's place in history is very critical. It is the the father of philosophy, of ideology, of democracy. You know the the philosophers defined democracy and justice here in this nation. So to be here where we're fighting for justice and democracy and Greece is reconsidering its current state of um, um, democracy after uh, you know 200 years, you only have to look at your own, your own writers and philosophers and the answers are all there to create or to move forward with an, an, you know, an idea of what you want, what we all need um, for our own sense of social justice. Thank you. Thank you.